elections have chilled the electoral reforms proposed by the Independent National Electric Commission in 2025. The proposals include the phasing out of the use of permanent voter cards during elections and the introduction of diaspora voting. The chairperson of the commission, Mahmoud Yakubu, disclosed this during a meeting with resident electoral commissioners in Abuja. The reforms are part of the 142 identified recommendations from the report of the 2023 general elections. Yakubu said eight require legislative action by the National Assembly, while 86 of the 142 recommendations require administrative action by INEC itself, and 48 recommendations require action by a variety of stakeholders, including security agencies, mobile network operators, statutory bodies, political parties, transport unions, civil society organizations, and the media. Well, the INEC chairman also said the commission will make a presentation to the joint committee of the Senate and House of Representatives on electoral matters as they continue to deliberate on electoral reforms. Well, the former Deputy National Chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Body George, wants Nigeria to learn the process of election management from the success recorded in the just-concluded elections in Ghana. Speaking with journalists in Lagos, George said the smooth conduct of the elections in Ghana made the last elections in Nigeria a joke and called on the Chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, to sit up and give Nigeria a more credible election. Body Judge also called on President Bola Tinubu to reduce the price of premium motor spirit, PMS, also known as petrol, to 300 naira per litre between Janu December and January to enable Nigerians have a joyous and Merry Christmas. The Ghanaians didn't go through the, the, let me call it, developmental experiences. You forgot when Ghanaians rushed to Nigeria looking for Peters, doing dirty job. Graduates were looking here. We were, we were laughing at them. The day it was general worry, yes, government, who said they should get out, go back. That was like reopening them, rechallenging them to go and sort their country out. They bought the same system that we are running run the election because that is the centerpiece of any democratic success it, it's a it should be a wake-up call the man there a whole professor Muhammad, Mahmoud, i am so ashamed of him so if the starting point were to make sure that the voice of the people will be heard uh, they can make a mistake, they will learn. Four years after that, they have the opportunity to revisit. If you didn't perform, they throw you under the bus. As a Nigerian, what can we do? Because the anger and the hunger are almost equal. On the streets, what am I suggesting? Let him sit down. Mr. President, this is directly to him and all those managing directors. They don't want to be called damaging directors. To sit down. What can we do? Give another. From this so 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 date of December, at least to the end of January. The cost of petrol will be 300 naira per liter. Yes, you know, they will say losses. Losses. Who can absorb the losses? They will absorb the losses. Everybody in Nigeria will be happy because it will positively impact on this period of the year, that December and that January. It is a challenge, and he can do it. So that everybody will be able to sleep well. 300 and smart, 300 naira per litre across the board. Chief Olabade George, the chieftain of the opposition People's Democratic Party, speaking there. Well, joining us to discuss the electoral reforms proposed by the Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, is public accountability and democratic reforms advocate, Ezenwa Nwagu. Thank you so much for joining us on Newsnight. Thank you. 
142 recommendations by INEC. A good place to start would be to ask you, I mean, what do you make about uh, these recommendations? I, early special voting for essential workers such as INEC, election workers themselves, security personnel, uh, personnel, and even journalists. I was happy to see that one. There's also diaspora voting, and of course, um, institutionalizing how we process election results and all of that. But what's your take on these reforms? Well, quick, it's, it's something that um, not just uh, INEC has been talking about. It's a, there's, there's a near consensus around those issues, um, special voting uh, and um, early voting will expand the democratic space considerably in a way that brings into the net um, journalists who are deployed for election duties, uh, observers, um, even the, the INEC officials themselves who are conducting. These are citizens and their right to vote has been, you know, circumscribed by just the fact that they are essential workers. <laughs> and they work essential on the day of um, is something that uh, should be taken seriously by the National Assembly. You were talking about those recommendations. So you have to compartmentalize them yeah. uh, because there are some that has to go to the National Assembly. Mm. There are some that are administrative by INEC. There are some by media, uh, you know, for introspection. There is some for security agents. There is some for civil society itself. But what's critical for me all the time is that after every election, INEC tries, there is a 2011 report, there is a 2015, 2019. What about the other stakeholders? We hardly find their own reports in terms of mirror imaging how they, the role they played in the elections. So we are looking at INEC. Is INEC document? Is INEC mm. that says this is our view? It's self-assessment. Yes, this is our view of mm -hmm. how the election um, you know, went. And you would notice that the first people to lay that report uh, to will be the resident electoral commissioners who they say are the frontline people. And whether they are off-circle elections or general elections, um, the disposition of the resident electoral commissioners have quite a lot to do with the outcomes uh, of the elections, whether they are logistics, whether they are, you know, um, resort management. The folks in Abuja hardly you know, conduct elections. It's those guys in the sub-national, the resident electoral commissioner. So it was gladdening for me that they were together looking at how they performed mm. and ways to get things much better in future. It's always very good to self-reflect, self-assess and learn from what you've been doing and try and see how you can make changes to be better. One of the recommendations that stuck out to me was the proposal of unbundling sort of his responsibilities, suggesting the establishment of an electoral offenses tribunal, a separate agency for political party regulation. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Why would you, do, do you think that INEC wants to unbundle some of his responsibilities? Is it that stretched out? And do you think this will make it more efficient or will it even increase bureaucracy? Well, it's, it's a, you, we have to be nuanced, really. Sometimes we want to solve a problem, we create more. You know, there is the cost of governance conversation that comes with creating new, but the desirability of that is also something you have to then, you know, take into consideration. So it's not novel, it's not INEX. Um, the Justice Ways Electoral Reform Committee report proposed, proposed on bundling of INEC and talks about this whole idea of creating an electoral offenses commission. Well, you see, those are not INEC responsibility. Uh, it's not INEC's job to create a commission. It has to go to the National Assembly, legislated, mm -hmm. and then, you know, brought, but such, you dealing with something that, you know, holds the folks, the politicians themselves. And that's what I talk about, self-reflection. So, electoral offenses commission, who are those who, mm. you know, um, who want to suppress votes, who are those who perpetuate violence, who are the purveyors of violence, mm -hmm. who are those who corrupt, um, you know, voters, politicians. So if you create an electoral offenses mm -hmm. commission, uh, who then would, so that recommendation is for the National Assembly to be able to say, look, some of the things that diminish us as a people in our elections that you, the politicians, perpetuate, we want to deal with that. I next says this has about, uh, out of that 142, some are for his own administrative yes. 
um, you know, um, consideration and all of that. Yes, of that. But, so, but you know, there are those who have raised concerns, and, and I like that you talked about mirroring image and self assessment because there are those who say, and it cannot sit down and tap itself on the back, come up with this report and say, This is how we have done so far. There are those who have raised que questions about accountability. INEX discretionary power. And what they say is the biggest reform we need is the attitudinal attitude, no change of the political elite in Nigeria, which you alluded to about politicians. Uh, some are of your view that every election cycle will come up with these recommendations, reforms, and even the Electoral Act. The latest one we have is as latest as 2022. Uh, 20, yes, 2022 Electoral Act. But we still find people who circumvent this reform. So the reforms we should be looking at should be the change, the human change. Uh, they say accountability when it comes to INEC. We've budgeted so much money to electoral reforms, uh, introduced technology, but we have INEC discretionary powers telling us when they can use the, elect the technology. They, ha they have told Nigerians will work for the electoral system and change the game, but we don't see that happening. So what is to say that after this beautiful report, self-assessment by INEC, things are going to change because it still has that discretionary powers and we have politicians who just want to circumvent the process. Well, How do so we put a stop to this? So it's not INEC's business to remove the discretionary powers. It still falls back to the National Assembly. If not, but you, again, you can't, you can't pigeonhole INEC, you know. Election is a sociological enterprise, meaning that there are variables that can come up that the law, you know, cannot necessarily deal with. You need to reduce discretion, but at the same time, you don't completely take away you know, uh, that discretion. But it's the role of the National Assembly because you are talking about the, the, the Electoral Act 2022. That law is the most amended law in Nigeria. Exactly. You know, every legislative year, every legislative period, you know, we go into... So that we need to dismantle that industry first, the electoral reform, uh, you know, industry in the National Assembly and allow our laws to take some... You know, let's let's even test them out. Mm. You are talking about technology, for instance. The beavers is perhaps the most, you know, um, expressive way we have used technology. What is the data saying? The data is saying in all the all the elections where the data uh, beavers have been deployed, it has performed ninety eight percent. What has it been able to do? It's been able to take away the voter identification theft. So you have states like Kano, Lagos, Rivers, Aquaibom, that in the past, um, Lagos has 7 million plus, Kano has something close to that, um, Rivers. The KKK states. Yes, but, Kano, you, but, but you mm -hmm. saw that in 2023 election, they were not able to do the 2 million mark. It's the beavers was responsible for that. Otherwise, you throw those big figures in, you, you, you understand. So we need to test these things out. But more significantly is what you, you know, clearly dealt with, which is the attitude of the politicians who are in the business of subverting every good law that is intended to make sure that our elections are. But what has happened is that we give them comfort. We are not going to discuss their misbehavior or behavior. We will put the person who has said, I conduct these elections. These are the things that I think I can do to help myself. But you also have responsibilities. Justice Uwe's reform report, INEC has implemented for itself, the ones that are administrative, about 69 of the recommendations from that Uwe's report. Which other institution, which other stakeholder in the electoral uh, you know, uh, chain has implemented even one bit you we have said okay create electoral offenses commission why has it not been created why will it not be created i have just told you why because at the end of the day the tragedy is that the place you want that law to be made mm. is actually the residence of those who subvert this process all right that's a good place to live it thank you so much uh as in wago who is uh, uh, public accountability and democratic reforms advocates. Thank you so much for being here on Newsnight.